In this particular similar, uh, seminar, we're going to cover the four most uh, popular ones. Uh, it will be the Fuse Deposition Modeling, FDM. It will be the Laminated Object Manufacturing, LOM. Selective Laser Sintering, SLS. And Stereolithography, SLA. The, the, we'll cover them. They are the most popular of all. SLS systems. I'm actually showing, presenting several systems uh, that can do rapid prototyping and it's not 3D printing in this particular case, uh, rapid prototyping using SLS technology. And each of these systems basically con uh, consists of two subsystems, the computer and controller and the object fabrication unit. OFU. This OFU has very, very interesting task. The task is to manufacture and also to reprocess the non-manufacturer materials. Remember that motor, that industrial mock-up. Most of the material basically is in the motor, in the prototype. That means that that uh, object fabrication unit should have a container full of these uh, raw materials that need that, that is needed for the motor and these empty spaces within that motor is a, a material that was not processed was not actually glued together we'll talk about it later in the seminar what is what, what does it mean to glue to be glued together but that excess material goes to another tank another container to be reprocessed. So inside each OFU, o, uh, Object Fabrication Unit, there are basically two containers. Not only the laser beam that runs around or any, all, the, all these optical uh, devices and components to make up that uh, SLS technology, which we'll describe in a minute, but also the tanks for the raw materials. Let's see how the selective laser sintering operates. What, are the, what is the principle of operation? High power concentrated laser, which is on the top of the picture, uh, laser beam goes to a scanner. Scanner is being controlled by the controller, by the computer. Now, we can see two pistons. The one on the left is the piston for with the raw material and it goes up and up and up every time there is a, a cycle every time there is a layer that piston every time it goes up the amount that it goes up is the um, is the thickness of a layer and at the same time the other piston go down it goes down by a thickness of a layer a roller goes from left to right, put a layer of this material above the platform and the scanner takes this laser beam and purifies and hardens this, uh, this raw uh, material. And the only places that it's being cured and it's being hardened being glued is where the laser beam hit the material. The other area where the laser beam did not hit the material, the material remains in this uh, original form, which basically a powder. So we have a powder container on the left, the raw material. We have the powder in the working uh, the building area, the excess of the powder goes to another tank, as we said, and the raw powder, the raw chemical, comes from the raw chemical, raw material um, uh, input tank. And the two tanks, the two pistons go this way. They go step after step after step, and each step is the thickness of a layer itself. Roller comes, lay a flat layer, and I put an emphasis on the word flat. It has to be flat. 
This is why the roller itself is a very high, highly controlled by a computer. Because the speed of the rolling and the rotation of the roller itself of it, as it moves from left to right it should be very precisely to assure a, a homogeneously thin layer, which will be the layer of the object. So that's basically the principle of the operation of SLS. Let's continue. Let's look at the operation. Powder tank on the left, and there is a powder tank on the right. In order to save time, we have two powder tanks that provide the object uh, tank with powder from both sides. You see it on the left. The pistol went down, the roller takes the material, the powder, spread it very homogeneously, thin layer on the object tank. The object tank goes down, that particular layer goes on top, coming up from the back side. Once the roller um, went outside the area of the object tank, then a laser beam does the hardening. And the hardening becomes the platform for the next layer. And this is how we build uh, a three-dimensional object. This is the concept of additive manufacturing. Layer after layer, once the laser beam hardened the upper layer, it becomes a platform to the layer above it. And we talked about empty spaces before. Let's look at this picture. Again, we see um, the piston on the left, we see the powder tank, we can see the roller as it goes from left to right, laser on top, scanner goes and scan, and only whenever the computer tells the scanner to go, this is where the laser beam will hit, and this is the only point that it will harden the material. The rest goes to the excess powder tank. But that particular object, this particular um, shape, you know, half a of a ring, curved, shaped, has empty space inside. And if we turn to the picture on the right, we can see that there are empty spaces in between. This uh, black, uh, dark black, is empty space at the end. The end of the product, there will be an empty space there. The material is basically all around where the with the two uh, gray levels lines. This is where actually the ring is. And the scanner, we can see it's this purple line, the purple area coming from the top, hardens only when it needs to be uh, hardened. The rest becomes excess powder being thrown away to the excess powder tank. So because there is a need for support, because we have a ring, and when we do the upper level layers of the ring, that area on top should have a support from the bottom, otherwise it will fall down. And the powder becomes the support. The excess powder is the support for the upper layers. And that's how the SLS creating the support. The powder acts as the support. It's a very dense powder, powder. So the upper layer that has basically nothing underneath in terms of material lays on the excess powder. This technology is very good for one-off functional prototypes. It's very cost-effective solution. And uh, there's a problem with this particular technology that the surfaces are not very, very smooth. I would like to show you an example. Look at this body. This is a body that was made by SLS technology. If you can see 
it's a not a fine surface. It's not a smooth surface. It's rough. It cannot be a sellable product. It's very good for one-off uh, object. Manufacturing of one or two or three for presentation, for uh, functional uh, evaluation. The surface are not um, smooth like a final product, uh, product should be. But using SLS for what we need for our purposes, that's absolutely satisfactory. It's a cost-effective solution. I can actually share with you some interesting uh, time and, and cost factors about it. It, was man it, was, it took approximately six or seven minutes to manufacture this particular uh, part that I'm holding. And it cost approximately three dollars, three and a half dollars to manufacture that. That's how quickly and how cheaply is this process. So if we made a mistake, very easily we can fix it, CAD files, convert it to STL, sending it to the SLS machine. Minutes after that, we came up, we're coming up with the revised, upgraded model, and two, three, four cycles, we do have a functional model. Still, surface is not smooth, but it is functional. The laser. The laser is a very high powered, okay, greater than 50 watts laser. Now it centered the powders directly. So there's no need for a polymer binder. It's very, very important. The laser actually does the job directly on the material. The material actually becomes bonded. And we can see the, the chemical material, the chemical composites. But the problem is that the density in this particular technology is only 70%. And this is why post-treatment sintering is still needed in this particular uh, technology. It, does not, it is not relevant in future technologies that we'll talk later on in the seminar, but this particular one needs post-treatment. We talked about the support quite a bit. I would like to actually to share with you something very interesting. Let's look at the picture on the right hand side. It's semi curved and the base is the widest area. As, as we go up in the Y direction and we explode the third dimension, the area becomes smaller and smaller. That means that there is no need for support in this particular case. We can see the example of the picture on the left. We actually put this uh, material upside down on the platform and it grows from the, from the cover to the walls. From the cover to the walls. Never from the walls to the cover. I want to show you this again. We looked at this particular example before. The polarity, the orientation of this particular is from the cover. This is the cover. From the cover, we make up the walls. We know we never actually manufacture these uh, such objects in this polarity because in this area, we will need a tremendous amount of support. If we do it this one, this position, they will not need any supporting. So again, in SLS supporting, we can see this architectural um, uh, object. It requires tremendous amount of support. And the support material is much more than the object material. That means in this particular family of applications, architectures, like we said before, the support material tank has different material than the powder tank. And the support material tank is much larger than the power tank because there's much more space to fill up just for supporting purposes. And again, the picture on the right hand side on the bottom, if we start developing that particular third dimension from the cover to the walls, 
then there will no there, there's no need for support but if we actually start manufacturing from the walls and finish up in the cover there will there will be a require a required uh, requirement of a support so we can see actually the two different examples one of them from the cover to the walls one of the, the other one from the cover to the walls the amount of extra work that is being needed in this rapid prototyping if we'll make a mistake in the design of the orientation of the process. And because of uh, the type of materials that we can use, we use in this SLS, one of the design tips is this breaking point. This breaking point is very, very crucial when we want to make small quantity, let's say 10 pieces. We actually use them as one piece, one body, but it has these uh, small niches that we can break. The materials that we use, they are specified here in this, uh, in this slide, allow us to break and separate one device from the other, but the internal the, the, the uh, entire system, look at it as one device, but it consists of several devices and we break them to separate them. Again, just to summarize the orientation, the, fabrica the fabrication and orientation, we see the CAD model, then we uh, intersection check, this is B, and then slicing it, but we start from the cover to the walls. That's very interesting and very uh, presentable um, uh, the example of the, the orientation of the device. And I keep putting an emphasis on that because many times the cost can be tremendously higher if we make a mistake in the orientation of the device. Here, in this particular case, there is no need for any support. And the support, if we make a mistake in that, the support will be much more, in terms of quantity of material, than the walls of this particular cup. And the process will be much longer. So the prototype will cost much, much higher. So let's just summarize this SLS technology. It's an inexpensive, has light sensitive liquid polymer that the roller actually takes, it requires post curing because the density is only 70%, no masking, it has tacky surface as the, as the um, example I showed you before, the surface is not fine and smooth surfaces, it's somewhat coarse, so we need to do surfacing, finishing, uh, support structure, typically required because the density is not high and because it's very easily can be cracked we need support structures in this particular technology the curing can lead to wrapping it's very sensitive to high temperatures once we cure it with high temperature in an oven then it might distort it somewhat in this particular technology and the materials are somewhat toxic which make us, an, uh, which there is, there's a need to use ventilation. So this is a kind of a one slide summary for the SLS technology.